If you're tired of losing close deals to your competitors, keep listening. These podcasts are designed to leverage the experience of tenured sales professionals and leaders to infuse performance in your sales journey. So let's go. There are absolutely strong similarities between the entertainment industry and sales. To perform or inform? That is the question. We have the privilege to sit down with Canada's own Chantal Riley. As a renowned actor, singer, dancer and entrepreneur, her journey will inspire and keep you moving past the moments where the average person stalls. A few years back, she performed the Canadian National Anthem at the NBA's All-Star Games. Can't decide. Well, not only are we uh, uh, proud of you, but I'm sure Canada's proud of you. I hope so. When you have the ability, and look at you on Canada Day wearing the colors already. Oh, that's right. There you go. And that was on purpose. Ooh. That was on purpose. There you go. <laughs> there's the voice. So I guess the first question is, in your industry, yeah. there's this concept of being a triple threat. What is that all about for us who don't really understand the industry? Triple threat stands for singing, acting, and dancing. So if you're able to do all three, they call you a triple threat. So you are, in fact, a triple threat. <laughs> I mean, I, hey, I guess? Uh, you used to not only tap dance and do yes. other forms of dance, but you actually taught it as well. I did. Okay. I did. So can you tell us about that passion? Because uh, from what I remember, it was a passion of yours. Yes, it was. I uh, grew up dancing, started dancing when I was three. And um, once I got old enough to start teaching at church, I started teaching some of the kids there and just started a little dance program. Um, I started teaching ballet and, and tap. Um, and I loved it. We even had like a little recital and stuff too, where the kids got to perform in front of their parents and the congregation. And it was it was an amazing time. I loved doing. It. And I used to do dance performances myself. And okay. Like church plays and all that stuff too. And uh, yeah. Isn't that how Beyonce got her start? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we know. No, I guess we know where you're headed, Chantel. All Whoa. right. Queen B. We just got to find you a oh, Jay Z. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> all right. Before I get to what's next, I want to talk about what was. Can you describe what was going on in your head yeah. when you're on a flight from Toronto going to Germany, God. knowing that the entire uh, script would be in German, yeah. your songs would be, and you have to learn this new culture language, mm -hmm. and you're probably competing against other people for this role yeah. that are native to the language that, mm -hmm. and you figured you had enough nerve. How dare. To get on a plane. How dare. Can you take us through your how head? How dare. Who and, am I? And, 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 and if you can, obviously we know how it ended out, how it turned out, but can you describe that? What was going on in your head? Uh, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> I tricked them or something. I don't know. But I was, a lot of things, I was excited. I was scared. Okay. I was like, do I really deserve this? Like, I, I, I later learned that, you know, when Disney's auditioning, uh, Disney theatricals auditioning, they literally go all over the world. Wow. And hold auditions. So they'll come to Canada, they'll go to, you know, parts of Europe, they'll go to Africa, they'll, you know what I mean? Like, and they audition looking for their next whoever. Mm -hmm. And so, when that said and when I heard that, that's when I was like, what the heck? What is this all my life that I'm able to have this moment? Um, but I don't know, it just goes back to, well, favor, God is good. And what's for me is for me. So you were able to jump on a plane, go to <laughs> a foreign land. Yeah, seriously. Different language. Yeah. I'm sure the food was good though. 
Hey, food is pretty good. I can't lie. Okay, I'm sure the food was good. I can't lie. Uh, really. People, from what I uh, understand, were good to you, and it was a good experience. Some yeah, friendships family, that, yeah. that lasted, yep. uh, that you probably still stay in touch with. Absolutely. Uh, what will you take of that as you venture on to new things, and what is on the horizon for Chantel Riley? For me, that gave me, I feel like, some new kind of superpower to make me feel like, oh, I could do whatever I want. And you did, because there's no bigger stage for Disney, yeah. for Lion King, yeah. than in New York City. On the Broadway stage. So now you've transitioned to New York City. Yes. Broadway. Yes. Bright lights. Yeah. Big city. Didn't know what the heck I was, I didn't know nothing but nothing there either. <laughs> Uh, their basketball team team needs a little bit of oh, help. Oh, no, God. Right, I Yikes. know. We can say that now because we are NBA champions. Still. still. And still, even after the bubble, hey, whoever wins the bubble, big asterisk. No, no asterisk. A big bubble beside yeah. this year's champion. Unless it's the Raptors, of course. Of course, 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 course. Right, course, right? Course, but like course, any course. other team. You're in New York City. Yeah. A lot more exposure. Yes. What were you hoping would happen to your career by being in New York City? I mean, I feel like with anyone, they hope they blow up, you know? Okay. And, you know, you hope you get the billboards and you hope you get the... Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's talk about billboards just for a moment. For a second. As a matter of fact, let's just show you a quick clip right now. Now that was you, <laughs> yeah. a 60 foot high <laughs> billboard, Times Square. Yeah. And then seconds out, I don't know if we caught it, but just seconds later, a bus goes by. Oh shoot. <laughs> and then there's this face on the side of a bus. Hi, come see Lion King. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't Not like that, like that but, but you're getting the like point. Yeah. So you're on buses, you got a 60 foot Hi, poster of you, Times Square. That face right there, <laughs> right? And and, and from, from what I understand, mm -hmm. they promoted Lion King using your face yeah. all over the world. Did you get to see some of that imagery and where it was all over the world? Yeah, when they when they ran my campaign, I had friends overseas in the show as well. Okay. So um, it was in London. Wow. Um, ended up in Paris for the yeah Lion King uh, Paris out there. Um, wow. Of course, New York, like all over the subways and all the mm -hmm. other stuff. Was it in Spain too, I believe. Yeah, then got to Spain. Um, I can't remember anywhere else that uh, I might have seen it, but can you describe the time where they flew you to Brazil somewhere oh. just for a quick little? Oh yeah, I got to go to Brazil. Guess what? Had to learn Portuguese. Okay. In like. I don't know, three, four days. That was exciting. The heck? I had to sing two of my songs in Portuguese. Now the Simba that I was going with, he knew Portuguese already. So for him, he was living his life. I had okay. to learn it. And perform. And perform it. So you performed in... I love languages though, so maybe that's why they're like, okay. yeah, yeah. She's able to German, maybe she could pick up this Portuguese. Huh? I love this saying. It's uh, one that I've gravitated towards uh, every time I speak in front, in front of an audience, a live audience. It's the moment that you don't feel nerves means you don't care anymore. Hmm. And yet, hmm. you still get nerves. Yes. And if you care about what you're about to do, you, you get nervous. Yeah. How do you deal with your nerves when you're about to perform? Oh God, um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, like I just do, I, I can't deal with them. They, sometimes they just take over, but there's nothing else you could really do but push through them. If anything, I kind of use it um, as an, like an adrenaline rush kind of thing. And 
for me, uh, I, I pray and meditate before I hit the stage, you know, but sometimes that doesn't work <laughs> right away. But it's something about being in the moment and, and feeding off of that nervous energy okay. that allows you to kind of push through it all together and allow you to really sit, uh, you know, sit in your, in your place, in your character or, or any kind of performance you're, you're trying to do. And so you actually channel that energy to propel your performance. Yeah. That's kind of powerful. Yeah. How would you suggest someone else do that? Now, do you feel, would you lend to what you said about prayer and meditation before getting on stage? Yes. Is that what's helping you channel? Absolutely. It doesn't matter how many times I did uh, Lion King, I would get nervous every time before that entrance because you're thinking of so many other things. You know, am I gonna sound okay? Am I gonna trip and fall? Am I going to forget my lines? Mm. You know, it's easy to get really comfortable when you're doing that show because you're doing it eight times a week. Um, but there's still something about that first <laughs> entrance or your first solo performance that it's something still triggers it. So what I would normally do is just say a quick prayer and just pretty much just say, you know what, this is not about me. This is for the audience, for okay. them to enjoy, for me to be able to tell the story so that they can relate in some kind of way and okay. take something something from it and so that kind of helps me shift my energy into being like this is not about me this is for them and i'm gonna uh invite you to do a little bit of name dropping <laughs> like what <laughs> now i've heard of some of the names that you had the opportunity to perform in front of yeah was there anyone in the audience where you knew beforehand that they were there and then you knew that you had to go out there and perform for that person yes um <laughs> brandy Okay. I was so okay. freaking scared. Um, but she came backstage and complimented my performance. So that made me, whew, I was like, oh my God, there's Brandy. Okay, so Brandy came uh, after. Yeah. Okay. So usually when celebrities come, we'll give them a tour and right. stuff backstage. And she complimented my performance so that I was so freaking scared. This is Brandy, okay? Yeah. Brandy, guys. Yeah. Like, hello. Um, Lupita Nyong'o came. She didn't come backstage though, but uh, just knowing that she was in the audience, in the audience, it kind of made me had to like you know, you know, be a little more on my P's and Q's. I hear you. I hear um, you. I mean, she's an Oscar winner, so you know, and a huge theater person. But um, those two were the ones that probably made me the the most. Nervous. So, so for me, the two names that I've heard you yeah. you mention, uh, Jamie Fox. Yep. Yep. And Tim Duncan? Yeah, yeah. How is it there. performing in front of somebody who is actually in your industry? So when you mention the first couple of names, yeah. they do what you do. Exactly. Does that differ than performing in front of, let's say, a Tim Duncan? Yeah, it's definitely different because they're in a totally different industry. And um, But look, I don't think he gets nervous if I come to watch him play basketball Ooh, like you know what I mean okay. so because he knows he he does what he does and he does it well and he he knows he can do better than me okay um so when you are performing in front of people that are in the same like you know they are your colleagues essentially you know what yeah I mean? it's um it's a little more it's a little more nerve-wracking you know it's kind of competitive a little bit but it's good competition to me I think good stuff in your space there are actors and then there are great actors. Mm -hmm. There are performers, and then there are those who transcend and captivate. Right. What would you say is the difference between an actor and someone who simply captivates an audience? Mm. Um, I think the first thing would have to be dedication. How much you love the work you're doing. How much you love being an actor. Um, because the more dedicated you are, the more work you'll put in. Okay. And so that could be anything from reading books, from studying the craft, um, you know, going to different schools of acting or just taking certain classes outside like that are like, you know, a couple weeks long or whatnot um, and taking courses and stuff just to kind of better your, your skills. And that's for anything really, it's any kind of training you gotta go and take time to train and understand how the craft works. And so I think the more time you put into it is the more um, dedication you're showing, but also the more you're able to connect with the art itself. Okay, so I've always heard of the concept of connecting in terms of connecting with your audience when you're performing. Yeah. You've just interest, introduced a layer that I've never considered. Mm. You just said connecting with the art of 
your skill. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that? I've never heard it in those terms before. Yeah, I mean, the art of acting. It's, you can't just, I mean, some people are, yes, they, they're just talented naturally, but there's only so far that natural talent can go unless okay. you understand the art and connect with the art itself. Understand its history, where it came from, understanding certain writers, their points of views for different plays or films, but also even connecting with different um, teachers in the art. Okay. And some some teachers you connect with more than others. Like there's a Meisner technique, or there's Stella Adler, and all these different teachers that have, you know a lot of people study under um, and their techniques, but. You know, you don't really connect with some of them, with all of them, right? So it's that connection, and um, and then having a love for that. And when you love something, you're connected to it in some kind of way. Now you're speaking about passion. What role does passion play in powerful performances? I mean, it sounds like a very obvious question, yeah. right? It sounds like you know, if I just set myself on fire, someone's <laughs> gonna watch, right? <laughs> I'm sure there's an audience for that. They call oh, them circuses, yeah. and I think they sell out once in a while as well. Yes. Uh, when you when we we speak about in terms of performances, mm -hmm. passion. Have you ever seen passion misguided? And how do you, as you were mentioning earlier, channel passion? But the concept of passion, what role does that really play in performance? Well, I feel like with passion. It's really important because if you don't have the passion for it, then your performance is not going to be up to par or matching it. So, I mean, I've had moments for myself where I even questioned whether or not I liked doing what I do anymore. Oh, because wow. I felt like my passion was was dwindling for it at wow. one point. Um, and so what happened then, and this is kind of when I was first starting out because it was all new to me and I didn't really understand the art it's, itself yet. Um, and so because my passion was dropping for it, my performance was dropping as well. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. Like so much so that I got called into the office and was like, hey, are you okay? We're just noticing your performance is a little off. And you know, I made up some like BS answer. I'm like, oh yeah, there's stuff going on at home. And really it was just like, it was a lot for me. It was my first time doing this. I didn't understand it. I was getting tired already. Like I was getting bored. Like who gets bored of performing? But it wasn't until I was able to understand you know, first of all, the opportunity that I was given to do um, with myself not having, you know, the professional experience or like the schooling to study, you know, theater and to be on stage. So what I would love to do is triangulate this. Triangulate. Yes. All right. Let, let, let's complete <laughs> this triangle here. Okay. And we're going to go on a, a P theme here. We have performance. Yes. We have passion. Yeah. Now you're completing the circle for me. You're using another word. You're saying being a professional. Can you lean on your professionalism to feel performance even when your passion isn't as hot as you would mm. want it to be? <laughs> and what if all three are firing? Oh, what happens then? You're unstoppable. Have you had those moments of being so in sports? Mm. Uh, they'll talk about being in the zone. Yes. Where you don't hear the you don't hear the crowd. You don't you just know the balls in your hand, basketball specifically. Mm -hmm. You're going to shoot your shot and you know what's going and you're in the yes. zone. You're not missing anything. Yeah. Have you experienced the zone and what does that have to do with triangulating your passion, a yeah. performance and being a professional? Um, I've definitely had those moments where I just knew I was on. Okay. Unfortunately, it wasn't every night. <laughs> but there were quite a few nights where I'm like, "Oh, I I'm just I'm on right now, I'm on fire. And it was, yeah, it's because the passion was there. I was excited to be on stage, excited okay. to be what I'm doing. And I was grateful for where I was um, and the costume I was able to put on every night. And, you know, a lot of it happens before you step into work too. It's that, like, preparing before you hit the stage, preparing, pre preparing before you even get into the dressing room okay. and telling yourself what kind of show you're going to have and letting yourself know like this is gonna be one of the best performances you're gonna have so it's all that background work that you have to do before you even step into the theater okay uh oh uh <laughs> hey listen she just changed the shape she changed the shape she we went from a triangle now we got to go square uh oh we're gonna have to find a fifth peak because i don't like squares but uh i don't know it's a childhood thing hey so listen <laughs> we're gonna because she just introduced another peak and that is 
preparation. Yes. And you spoke about before going on stage, you're backstage, mm -hmm. and you are preparing mm -hmm. for your performance. Mm -hmm. And there's almost a measure of professionalism that goes into preparation. Absolutely. So you can perform mm -hmm. and ignite your passion. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. I always knew that, like, if I, I could always tell when I didn't have a good show. And it was always when I wasn't preparing or professional, meaning I wasn't warming up before I was going on stage or my attitude was just, I was not even in the right headspace for the performance, you know, just walking in, putting on the costume and heading out. I wasn't really taking in the time to really sit down, be still, you know, and do the ABCs of what I'm supposed to do before a performance. And I mm -hmm. always knew that when I did do that, my performance was better. Okay, I've always heard the concept of hard workers in your industry. Yeah. Is that what you're referring to? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm just, put, I'm just connecting the dots. Thank you. This is my ignorance in your field. And it's a square. Eventually, we're going to find a fifth peak. We're going to get that pentagon here. Yeah, yeah, we'll get a pentagon. There okay. you go. The sales psyche is so fragile. Mm. You constantly have these no's and knows and knows and you got to keep on picking up the phone and and sometimes you know dialing for dollars is a real thing for mm -hmm. real salespeople that want to get out there and make a mark in yeah. their industry and make a name for themselves mm -hmm. and some dollars along the way uh, we've had many conversations about the similarities between sales performance yeah. and your industry uh, can you describe scenarios in which there are some si similarities to constantly hearing no but having to pick up that phone again and again and again. Are there similarities in your industry? Oh, God, yeah. Um, it's called auditioning. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, okay. especially around a time called pilot season and you get audition after audition after audition and you get no after no after no. After, okay. After no. After no. After, okay. 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 Uh, there's a whole lot of no's until you get that yes. But this is where the passion comes back. If you love right. what you do, and you're right. passionate about what you do, okay. and what you, you know, where you see yourself in this industry, then that passion's gonna be the one that's pushing you to keep even going back to the audition. I could take this. It made me stronger, if anything. Okay. And I mean, when they say in New York, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere. And New York is a tough city. And I lived in New York for four years. And I think that's where I got most of my hardening, to be honest. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'm grateful for it because now when I get those no's, it's not like a, oh, I'm done for. It's like, okay, on to the next. And you brush it off a lot easier than you would had you not been hardened, I guess you could so say. So in, uh, in my sales years, one of the things that I would do immediately after getting a no was I would hang up and say thank you. Mm. Say, because I just figured if I got through enough no's, I would get to my next yes. <laughs> exactly. And so that was my approach is uh, let me say thank you for getting that no out of the way. Right. Because I kind of figured I'd have to go through a few no's to get to a yes. 100%. And so I was, I, I, it made me happy. Yeah. And one like, one okay. more no to get out of the way because now it. that you're out of my way, my next call is going to be my, my well, yes. That's it. And you, yeah, you want that yes that's your yes. You know what I mean? And in, in my industry, it's like you want that role that you know is meant for you. Okay. And was destined for you. So you thank God for that no. That didn't go through for a role that you probably wouldn't be able to connect with or you didn't feel comfortable doing in the, in the first place. And because that left space for this yes. What are you most proud of? You have, I mean, in the intro, they would have seen your bio. Uh, and, and by the way, I would, didn't exaggerate anything. That really is what she's been up to and being able to accomplish. What are you most proud of and why would you consider that one of your proudest accomplishments? Um, oh gosh, this is such a hard question. I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm proud of a lot of things, um, okay. but I think I am most proud of sticking to being an actor. And, and being a performer. Um, okay. There have been many times where I wanted to quit. <laughs> many, 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 many times. Wow. Um, but uh, for me, it's starting something and, and finishing it. And the fact that I'm still in this game, I, I'm, I'm very proud. 
and very grateful because it is a tough one to be in. I mean, mm -hmm. you're working today, but you might not be working tomorrow, you know? And so far for the past few years, I've been working consistently. And not only that, I've, I've been loving it still and have still, you know, still doing it. And so I think for me, the biggest accomplishment is still being able to call myself a performer. And, and that is the fifth P for us today. And that is uh, a measure of pride. Mm -hmm. And when you take pride in your work, you're going to perform. Absolutely. Because you want to be professional about it. You want to bring your passion. Absolutely. Every time you step foot on that stage. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making it into a Pentagon because we don't deal with four pointy object, or uh, I'll have to edit that out. Yeah, that didn't work. Oops. Okay, as we build up to you, you receiving your Oscar. Sure, okay. Is that one of your driving forces or what is it that propels and drives you? Um, from, honestly, for me, at one point, yes, it was, I want to get that Oscar. You know, I want to get that statue that proves to the world that I am good at what I do. But mm -hmm. I'm learning more and more now that I don't care. If it comes, it comes. But for me, it's just, again, it just goes back to the passion is the idea of I get to do this. This is my job and how grateful I am. And not only that, but getting better and better every time that I do it. Okay. It's working with other artists that are able to feed into me and help me grow and help me, you know, study my craft or sharpen my whatever, my skills. And so for me, that is like, that's what excites me. Okay. Um, of course, getting a little recognition for it is nice. I would say so. I mean, I would take an Oscar if they're going to give you an Oscar, honey. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that was worth, no, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you're right. You got a little bit of work. Uh, okay. Hey, hey, hey. All right. Hey, all right. Oh, okay. Now she's going to get into action movies. Okay. Uh, so what's next for Chantal <laughs> Riley? What's coming up? What are you excited about? I'm excited for our fourth season of Frankie Drake Mysteries. I'll be returning hey. as Trudy Clark. So that's really exciting. Um, we're supposed to be, uh, start shooting in the fall. Hopefully that happens, with, of course, with the global pandemic happening. Mm -hmm. But um, there's that. I'm looking to produce my own show. So stay tuned for that. Um, and... Well, so this is... Uh, I might be stealing your thunder. Steal it away. But I'm really excited about uh, your ability to babysit kids. <laughs> Now, I'm going somewhere with okay, this. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not going to age myself here, but you might know a couple of our, uh, a couple of the kids around that we both know. How old are they again? Well, let's move on from that. <laughs> let's move on from that. Oh, the, uh, no. there, there's an affinity for you when it comes to kids. Love them. And that has, now I know that you were involved with a few different clothing lines before. Yes. But there's a project that you're working on right now. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? I have launched my children's boutique called Sweet Riley, and it is clothing for ages three months to five years. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited. I, I have a new nephew now, and so he kind of inspired me because I spoil him rotten already. And I have a goddaughter in LA that I spoil like crazy and just like to buy them clothes. And I'm like, wait, why don't I clothe them myself? Mm. I like kids clothes. I like clothing and fashion. So why not? So I, I started the clothing line, Sweet Riley. And if you look down right there, you'll see the link. Uh, check them out. Get your gear there for your little ones. Yeah. I have an EP that's out right now called I Am, and you can stream it on every single platform you can imagine. I'm on the Spotify's, I'm mm -hmm. on the iTunes mm -hmm. and the Apple Music's and the Google Play's and the YouTube's and all that stuff. So please, please, please take a listen and enjoy. And that was called? I Am. I Am. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Chantel.